Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am doing this makeup tutorial on this lovely lady, Kim, and she is actually a YouTuber as well and a makeup artist, so we decided to collab with each other and do makeup on each other. So I will link her channel down below and you guys can go check her out. Anyways, I decided to do this soft pink cut crease makeup and I absolutely loved it. For the first couple of steps, they for some reason didn't record, so I just went in with the MAC Matte Gel here, just as a primer all over her face. And then I went in with the Anastasia Dip Brow Gel in the shade Dark Brown, and I just filled in her brows with that. Right now, I am taking the um, P. Louise Base in the shade Rumor 05, and I'm just going right underneath her brows, carving those out, and then also using that as an eyeshadow primer all over with a little um, concealer brush there. Next, I'm taking the P. Louise base again, but this time I'm taking it in the shade Rumor 02. This is just basically gonna act as a brighter base for us, just so the eyeshadows pop a little bit more. We're working with reds and pinks and everything, and I just wanted to make sure that they come out as bright as possible. Now I'm just taking a fluffy blending brush and just patting out the excess product. With the P. Louise bases, you don't actually set them with any sort of powder or anything. You just pack your shadows on right on top of them. So I just wanna make sure I tap off all the excess products so I don't have anything creasing. Now I'm going in with one of my favorite palettes. It's the Juvia's Place Warrior II palette. This is an all matte palette and I absolutely love it. So I'm just taking that darker um, matte red shade, I think. It's more like a burgundy in person. And I'm just placing that right in her crease and I'm kind of using tapping motions. You don't wanna use swiping motions on top of the P. Louise bases because they tend not to blend out that quickly. So you wanna tap on first and then start blending out. And then next I'm taking that darker brown shade just with a little more um, tapered brush there and then just patting that right in the crease. I just needed to have it a little bit more brown than it was. So I'm just using that to deepen it up a little bit. Then I'm going back in with that same brush that I used with the burgundy shade and I'm just going right back over top of it just to make sure that there are no harsh lines and blend those two colors together. Then I'm taking another shade of the P. Louise base. This is the shade 0.5. And this is quite a bit lighter than her skin tone, but basically I'm just taking a flat brush there and I'm starting to carve out her crease with it. As you can tell, I keep having her open her eyes just to make sure my placement's right. Her eyelids are not actually the same shape, so I just wanted to make sure that she opened her eyes just so I can kind of get the placement as even as possible. And as you can tell, I'm just kind of carving out the shape for her on each of her eyes. Now I'm taking the star of the show. I'm going in with the MAC Rose Pigment. I don't get to use it that often, but I absolutely love it for this look. It's kind of a pink and orange duochrome kind of pigment, and it's so, so pretty. But I'm just tapping it all over the lid just to create a nice even color. And then you'll see me going back into the same brush that I used earlier with the burgundy shade and just kind of deepen up the outer crease where we lost a little bit of the pigmentation. Now I'm going in with my favorite gel liner. It's the Inglot 77 gel liner. I'm just drawing a straight line across. I was thinking about doing a wing at one point in time, but I decided that with this look, I think that it'd be better if I just went straight across with it. When you're working with loose pigments, you do definitely get some fallout. So I'm just cleaning it up right here. Now I'm taking my Maybelline Falsies Volume Express Mascara, and I have said this before, but I don't usually use high-end mascaras because I usually just go in with lashes anyways, and plus you're using disposables, so you don't really get the benefit of the actual spoolie. So take whatever mascara you'd like, and then I'm going in with the AliExpress lashes. These are the E17 Viso Free lashes, and they are absolutely gorgeous um, for the price that they are. I believe they're like $1.50 each or something. They're amazing, but they're kind of like the faux mink wispy lashes. Now I'm taking my Face Atelier foundation and I mixed the shades 12 and Blaze. And Blaze is actually a straight up yellow color because I felt like I needed a little bit of warmth in her skin because of her undertone. So I just mixed those two colors evenly together and then I took a concealer brush and dotted little dots all over her face just to get a little bit more control of where I'm placing the product. And then instead of using my normal sponge wedges that everybody seems to like on here, um, I decided to mix it up and go in with my foundation brush here. It's just an angled foundation brush. I actually got it off of Amazon pretty inexpensively and I absolutely love it. It gives a really, really nice finish to the skin. It's really soft and Kim really seemed to like it a lot. When I used to work at MAC, I actually originally learned how to do makeup with brushes, so I don't really know how I got into the sponge thing. 
I like using beauty blenders on myself, so maybe that was why, but beauty blenders aren't necessarily sanitary enough to be using on clients. So I switched to those little alcone disposable sponges, but I'm now kind of getting back into brushes and I might get a few more of these just to have enough for each person. Usually when you do makeup applications, it's pretty impossible to sterilize and also clean foundation brushes fully when you're on jobs. So I'm probably gonna purchase probably like eight of these or something and just have duplicates at the ready because I'm really enjoying using brushes again. Now I'm taking the Too Faced Sculpting Concealer and this is just going to act as a highlight kind of shade for her. So I'm going right down the center of her face with that same concealer brush and I'm just taking a little tapered fluffy brush there. It's actually an eyeshadow brush, but I decided to use it just to blend out the concealer because I wanted to try a tutorial where I literally didn't use any sponges. I kind of wanted to challenge myself on this one because <laughs> I'm so used to using sponges nowadays, but I'm just blending that out and making sure that everything blends in well with the foundation. Oh, and the concealer. last step i'm doing is just setting her with setting spray and then we are all done i hope you guys really enjoyed the tutorial i know that she definitely did and here's her reaction <laughs> oh wow <laughs> i love it yes girl <laughs> As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below what you guys thought of this look, and I will talk to you guys later. Alright, bye!